Today, I'm going to walk you through a workflow you can use to create professional-looking product photos at scale. It's simple, efficient, and best of all, something you can easily turn into a service and sell to anyone who needs high-quality product photography. Product photography can be expensive and sometimes just not practical. So if you're looking for a way to turn plain, boring images into stunning, professional-looking shots, then you're in the right place. This video is for you. Let's see how it all works. To run the process, we'll use Airtable as our database, along with an Airtable form to upload the raw images. I'll show you exactly how to set everything up in just a moment. If you take a look at the database, you'll see there's just one table called Photos. It includes a few fields, Description, Image, Final Image, and Status. The Status field tracks where each photo is in the workflow, with options like Ready, In Progress, and Done. End the form, we'll upload a product photo. Just a quick reminder, garbage in, garbage out. If you start with poor quality images, you can't expect great results. So make sure your initial photos are as good as possible. The better the input, the better the output. For the status, we'll set it to ready. This tells our workflow that the item is prepped and waiting for its makeover. Then, just click Submit. By the way, Airtable forms can be shared with others. So if you're working with a client, they can upload their own photos directly. It's a great way to save time and keep things moving smoothly. Now, back in the table view, we can see the new item has been added. You'll notice the description and final image fields are still empty, for now. Next, we'll have AI analyze the uploaded image and generate a detailed product description. We'll then pass that, along with a custom prompt, to OpenAI's Image Processing API. Over in N8N, I'm going to click Start to kick off the workflow. First, this node fetches the first item with the status set to Open. It then sends the image to OpenAI to be analyzed, and in return, we get a detailed description of the product. That description gets stored back in Airtable. Next, we use an LLM GPT-40 Mini in this case to craft a prompt describing exactly what we want in the final image. Since the OpenAI Image API expects a binary file, we download the original image to use as input. Now for the magic. We send both the binary file and the prompt to GPT, and it generates the enhanced image for us. Here comes the tricky part. Airtable doesn't accept binary files directly. It needs a URL. So, to solve that, we upload the image to Google Drive using OneNode, then use another to make it publicly shareable. Airtable grabs that public URL and stores it in the database. Finally, we do a bit of cleanup. Since we no longer need the file on Google Drive, the last node deletes it. I repeated these steps several times with different images, so let's take a look at the results. Here's one of our finished product shots. And next to it, you'll see the prompt that was generated by the image analysis. Now, you could skip this step entirely and just type something like, ladies brown leather handbag. But hey, we're automators. We like to let the LLMs do the heavy lifting for us, right? Now take a look at how much better this looks. If you were selling this bag, which image would you rather have on your website? This one, with the product shown on a person, looks way more dynamic than it just lying flat on a surface. And this one, doesn't it look a lot more professional? Wow, what a difference. This is seriously impressive. Now let me show you, step by step, how I built this workflow. We start with a regular trigger node, but you can easily swap this out for a schedule trigger instead. Just click the Add button, search for Schedule, and select the Schedule Trigger. Adjust the settings to fit your needs, remove the original click trigger, and plug in the new node. Simple as that. The first Airtable node connects to the Product Photography database and fetches the first record with the status set to Ready. If you're not sure how to set up these credentials, check out my other video called N8N Credentials Explained. 
I'll drop a link in the description below. Next, we take the image URL from Airtable and plug it into the GPT Analyze Image node, along with the prompt that tells it to describe the image. Then we save the resulting image description back to Airtable, along with the status set to In Progress. This way, if something goes wrong during image processing, we won't mistakenly mark it as complete. We only set the status to Done when we're 100% sure we have the final product image. Next, we pass that image description into GPT, along with a prompt that explains what kind of result we're aiming for. Feel free to tweak this prompt to get the exact outcome you want. For this example, I used a Rolex watch as the input image. Since OpenAI requires a binary file, not just a URL, we need to download the image first. Once we've got the file, we pass it into the next node, along with the prompt that was generated by the prompt creation node. OpenAI returns the image as a base64 string, so we need to convert it back into a binary file. This allows us to upload it to Google Drive in the next step. We do this because Airtable expects a URL for the image, not a file. And to make sure Airtable can access that image, we have to change its sharing permissions. That's exactly what this next node handles. Once everything's set, we save the new image in Airtable and update its status to Done. Finally, since we don't need the image sitting in Google Drive anymore, we delete it to keep things clean. Let me show you how to set up that form in Airtable to upload our images. While on this screen, you'll notice a button at the top labeled Forms. Go ahead and click it. Then select New Form. Now, we need to choose which database table the form will use. In this example, we've only got one table, called Photos. Select that. Next, give your form a name. Here, you can also preview what it'll look like when it's published. I'm going to type in product source images. Then just click create form and you're all set. Here, you can customize the form with some nice branding, like a logo and a cover image. This is especially helpful if you plan to let others upload images for processing. As you scroll down, you'll see all the database fields are represented here as form controls. Some of them don't need to be filled in by the user, so just click on those and hit the delete key on your keyboard to remove them. Just a quick heads up, up until this point, everything has been free. But if you want to add custom branding to your form, you'll need an Airtable subscription. Honestly, Airtable is super useful, and if you're planning to build lots of automations, I definitely recommend getting a subscription. And now, just hit the publish form button and you're off to the races. And as always, you can find a link to the free template in the description below. Thanks for sticking around to the end. If you found this helpful or it sparked some ideas for your own automation journey, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support helps more productivity enthusiasts discover these time-saving techniques. Until next time, keep automating the boring stuff. I'll see you in the next video.